Um, <laughs> I love this. Cal um, is really into glasses right now. Can you see how he's a fifth grader? <coughs> Why did we get dark? Can you see how he's a fifth grader? <laughs> okay, guys. Yes, we still have our Christmas tree up. We're going to make it a multi uh, holiday tree. Oh. We're getting into lesson 14. Yeah. And our house is a mess. This is what our house looks like on the weekends. We have these crazy kids playing. Um, we are going to be solving word problems. We're going to use all of the amazing tools that we <laughs> all the amazing tools that we've been collecting along the way in module three, and I think uh, this lesson is kind of a show off lesson because we are show off what you know about showing off um, because we're just kind of showing off our skills. So we'll use a variety of strategies, and it's going to be um, a week full of problem solving as far as math goes as we lead up to our celebration of learning on Thursday. Yeah, he's saying BB da da mama. What else, Cal? Yep. They're going to do a great job. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Can you wave? Bye-bye. Can you blow a kiss? Oh, God. Oh, sweetie. Spend some time here. Um... Working with a variety of problems um, and just kind of using those amazing skills that we've been gathering throughout modules one, two, and three. So first let's look at A where we are to rearrange the terms so that you can add or subtract mentally. Interesting. So rearranging means just kind of moving the numbers around, right? Um, so let's rearrange the numbers. We have one fourth plus two and two thirds plus seven fourths plus one-third. Let's rearrange the numbers so that our common denominators are right next to one another. So we have, we're going to slide these around and we're just going to rewrite our expression and then that will give us the opportunity to just kind of add these up really, really quickly. Okay, so I've rewritten the expression where I've moved around or rearranged the terms so that I have common denominators. Uh, as next door neighbor. So here, very quickly, we can add one fourth and seven fourths. And thank you, Natalie, that gives us eight fourths. We will simplify here in just a moment, but right now let's just go, at, go through and add. Now we can add two and two thirds to one third. Let's add our whole numbers first. We have two, and then two thirds and one third is three thirds. Okay. So pretty, pretty simple here. Let's go ahead and simplify. We know that 8 fourths is just a very fancy way of saying whole number 2. So now we have whole number 2 plus whole number 2. And let's think about how we can simplify 3 thirds. Thank you, Ava. Um, 3 thirds is just, oops, a fancy way for saying whole number 1. And now, sorry to add a kind of question mark to that. I did not mean mean to do that. Now we can just go ahead and solve. So we have 2 plus 2 plus 1 is equal to 5. Beautiful. Cool. Um, so yeah, let's just rearrange the terms again. When we look at B, it's just going to get a tad bit more complicated because now we're using subtraction. It's really important to keep our operation with our fraction. So let's take a look at this one. Let's go ahead and rearrange our terms so that our like denominators are next door neighbors. So it, I'm just going to rewrite this. We have 2 and 3 fifths plus 2 fifths minus 3 fourths. Okay, so let's go ahead and add like denominators and then see where we can go from there. Um, so we have 2 and 3 plus fifths plus 2 fifths. Let's go ahead and add our whole numbers first. We, that leaves us with 2 and then 3 plus 2 is 5. So we have 2 and 5 fifths minus 3 fourths. Let's simplify this because we know that 2 and 5 fifths is just a fancy way of saying 2 plus 1. 2 plus 1 and now we still have the minus 3 fourths. We'll go ahead and simplify again, 2 plus 1. I think you all hopefully probably see that is 3. And now what we're working with is 3 
minus 3 fourths. Do you guys remember a long, long time ago when we were working with that number line? We can, if we imagine a number line, I think we can do 3 and 3 fourths. Well, I know we can do 3 and 3 fourths in your head. So we have 3. We're starting with 3 and it's subtraction. Subtraction, so we're moving backwards. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mark 3 and then I'm going to mark 2. I'm going to divide the space between 2 and 3 into 4 equal parts. Thank you, Sienna. 1, 2, 3, 4 because our denominator is 4. So now we're going to start at 3 and we're going to take a hop back that runs the distance of 3 fourths. So we're going to hop back 1, 2, 3 fourths. This is our end point. What number is this? Well, it's 2 and 1 fourth. 2 and 1 fourth. Do you have to draw the number line? No. Is this a skill that we have learned to use in uh, module 3? Yes. Some of you might be able to just <clears throat> imagine this happening in the number line. That's totally acceptable to do this in your head at this point in the game. Or you can just quickly draw out that number line so you feel completely confident that that's what's happening. So that's a, kind of just a cool, a cool uh, tool to keep in your toolkit. Uh, let's look at another couple of problems. Okay, kiddos, let's look at this problem. Um, this is a pretty interesting one. Uh, we are filling in the blank to make the statement true. So what we're actually doing here, you guys, is algebra. We're not going to do it the traditionally like kind of algebraic way. We're going to do it the Eureka way because those are the tools that we have right now. When you guys get into algebra like next year and in seventh grade, you'll solve this a little bit differently. But today we're just going to use the tools that we have right now to fill in the missing piece. So we have 11 and 7 eighths and we have 3 and 1 fifth. You guys recognize, you know, I'm just going to rewrite that so we have a little bit more room to work with. 11 and 7 eighths plus um, 3 and 1 fifth. Plus, uh, minus a missing piece. All of those, so these two added together, subtracting some mystery piece is going to equal 15. So you guys, before we worry about this missing piece, let's add up these two numbers. Yes, Cal. Um, you guys probably immediately recognize the fact that those do not have common denominators. Um, we are just going to multiply the denominators together to find a common denominator. The denominators are 8 and 5, so we're going to multiply 8 uh, by 5 to get 40. So we're going to use a common denominator of 40. Let's go ahead and rewrite our expression with, oops, our common denominator of 40. Don't forget to bring down your whole numbers. So we have 11 and 3. Now we just need to figure out what our numerators are. Again, our common denominators are 40. So now we have to think to ourselves, okay, up here, and this is why it's pretty helpful to show your work. Up here, we multiplied 8 by what number to get 40? Well, we multiplied 8 by 5. To get 40. So if we multiply 8 by 5, we have to multiply 7 by 5. Very good. What is 7 times 5? Well, 35. Thank you, thank you, Cal. Okay, so we have 11 and 35 fortieths. This is the equivalent fraction to 7 eighths, 35 fortieths. So now we need to look at 3 and 1 fifth. We brought down our 3. Now we're trying to convert 1 fifth to a, an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 40. So we multiplied 5 by what number to get 40? Thank you, Cal. We multiplied 5 by 8 to get 40. So if we multiplied 5 by 8, we have to multiply 1 by 8. Do you guys know 1 times 8 is 8? Okay, so now we have two fractions with equivalent denominators. Let's go ahead and rewrite the rest of our expression. We're going to subtract some mystery amount, and that expression is going to be equal to 15. So let's go ahead and add up our two mixed numbers that have equivalent fractions. So 11 and 3, we'll add up our whole numbers first and then we'll add our fractions together. 11 and 3 is 14. 35 and 8 is 43.
3, and then our denominator is 40. Please feel free if 35 plus 8 doesn't come immediately to you. There is no shame in just quickly doing that on the side of your paper. 35 plus 8, 5 plus 8 is 13. Carry a 10 over a 3 plus 1 is 4. It is totally, totally acceptable to do this on the side. So now we're dealing with 14 and 43 fortieths minus some mystery number is equal to 15. So let's think about what this means. Let's just draw a quick tape diagram. So we have a rectangle. The entire rectangle is 15 units long. The entire rectangle is 15 units long. 14 and 4 thirds minus some, I'm sorry, 14, yeah, oh, thank you. Four, um, 14 and 43rd, 43 40th minus, this should be like a dotted, minus some mystery chunk is going to be equal to 15. This is that mystery chunk. I'm trying to do dotted lines. Okay. Let's go ahead and simplify 14 and 43 40ths. Um, 14 and 43 40ths is a mixed number, but the fraction element is also an improper fraction because the upstairs is larger than the downstairs. So we know that 40 40ths is another fancy way to just say the number one. So let's go ahead and um, decompose 14 and 43 fortieths. 14 and 43 fortieths is equal to 14 plus 40 fortieths plus 3 fortieths. 40 fortieths, as you guys know, is just a fancy way to say whole number one. So let's simplify this expression. 14 plus 1 is 15. So 14 and 43 fortieths is equal to 15 and 3 fortieths. So if 15 represents this rectangle and 15 and 3 fortieths represents this entire, sorry guys, I'm kind of running out of room, space. What is this mystery chunk? Well, this mystery chunk, my friends, is the 3 fortieths, because I'm just going to write it one more time here. 15 and 3 fortieths minus 3 fortieths is equal to 15. Cool. So we did some simplification. We did some com finding common denominators. We decomposed a mixed number with an improper fraction. And you guys kind of did some algebra. So this is a really, really good problem. If this, if I went too quickly and if you're your mind is a little foggy right now, I would just rewind, pause, and maybe watch it one more time because you guys have all of the skills that you need to be successful in a problem like this. Um, I think it's just a matter of taking it slow. Do you have to draw a tape diagram? No, you don't. But it is helpful to represent the information that we have. Um, I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. I want you guys to know that uh, a secret word is PJ masks because hey Cal, what are you watching right now? Yeah, he's watching PJ masks. Um, I had to lure him with that show so he would be quiet so I can make this video. Um, so again, the secret word is PJ masks. We are going to have a wonderful week in Mathland. Uh, we're going to work on like pretty complicated problems like this. Please know that you guys are fully capable of making problems like this happen. Um, we're going to be doing secret algebra, um, but we're going to do it the Eureka way by representing missing parts with diagrams. Um, 
you guys can do this. You are ready for this. It's going to be a great week. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.